This morning, before we get into our lesson, I want to take just a moment and share with you about an opportunity we're going to have in just a few moments. How many of you believe that God does still answer prayer? He does. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. How many of you know the Bible doesn't change? Okay, we may change, and times may change. The Bible never changes. Well, I want to share with you an opportunity that we have this morning to pray and trust that that supernatural God is still working. Doug Bullerman, uh, <clears throat> he and Sharon have been a part of Solid Rock, <clears throat> excuse me, for many, many years, been faithful on what God has called them to do. This last week, he received some news that was not such good news in the natural. Uh, the doctor told him that he has pancreatic and liver cancer. And uh, the first time when you hear news like that or hear things, it can, first of all, I think there's shock of, what did I just hear? And, and you're not, you're, you're, you're not, you get kind of fuzzy thinking of like, what, what is, what, what's going on? And then uh, all these other thoughts come in. And then you sometimes have really well-intentioned people who give you things and share things with you that, well, you know, it's, um, Maybe it's your time or, you know, get things or all these thoughts, you know, I, I need to plan a funeral. I need to, because, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time and, and they never can tell you how much time you're going to have. They just kind of hit and miss with that. And so our, our thoughts many times, what happens is begin to focus now on all of these natural things. And what the enemy does is he brings in fear. Fear is really how he operates. Fear is not of God. We don't have a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Now, there's nothing wrong, and I think a person is wise to, well, I need to get my affairs in order. Good. You're healthy. Get your affairs in order, okay? Make sure you have all of those things planned out and ready to go, not because you're planning on going tomorrow, but because I want things set and in place for my family, but, but here's the thing, when any, the mind is something that we really have to deal with. Because Psalm 112 tells us that, you know, let's just turn there. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a few minutes here, and we're going to lay a little bit of a foundation before we, before we pray. Because I believe faith comes by hearing what? God's Word. It doesn't come through our experiences. It doesn't come through our opinions. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. In Psalm chapter 112, it tells us, this is one of my favorite psalms, praise the Lord, go figure, this is the way a lot of psalms start, praise the Lord, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. So, we, our part is verse number one, right? Bless the Lord, fear the Lord, okay? Delight greatly in his commandments. Now, once you and I do that, notice as we go down here, some amazing things are said about that individual. That's man or woman, all right? Notice verse seven. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Anybody ever had evil tidings? Bad news? Things you wish you hadn't? come across your ears. But notice what it says. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? His heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. Doesn't mean when you trust the Lord, you're not going to get bad news. It means, sometimes it might, you might have more bad news because the enemy doesn't like you. Wants to destroy you. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. We know that. And so what does he do? He'll bring bad news our way. Whether it comes through a doctor, whether it comes through a relative, whether it comes through well-intentioned meaning people or people that hate us. I mean, it can come many different ways. The key is <clears throat> I keep my heart fixed, trusting in the Lord. Fixed. And, and a lot of times, this news that you hear, it, it's just like, like a gut punch, Knocks your feet out from where they just were and your head's down to where your feet were. And it's like, where did this come from? Sometimes we see things coming on the horizon. Other times, we don't. And it just hits you. But your heart needs to remain fixed, trusting in the Lord. Here's the thing. 
that <clears throat> for a believer, bottom line, for a believer, you're a winner. In, now, I'm not saying that like, hey, we're all winners. We all get a, you know, we all get a participation trophy. <laughs> I'm not talking about that type of, of winner. We win in the sense, the worst it's going to get for me in eternity is right now, right here. This is as bad as it gets. Now, I'm not saying that our society and world <clears throat> may not get worse, but the earth is the only hell I will ever know. That is good news. And the thing about it is, as I walk on this earth, I don't do it alone. There's wonderful people who can walk with me, but there is one greater than any other human on this planet right now, and that's Jesus himself who walks with me. He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So even though I go through a life and difficult things happen and bad news hits me and things don't go my way, there is one to strengthen me and empower me. Not only does he walk with me, but he through the Spirit of God abides on the inside of me. He dwells within me. So wherever I go, I have an answer. I have the answer. The Spirit of God leads and guides me into what? All truth. And so... This morning, what I, what I want us to do, because <clears throat> I, I believe there's probably others here, too, that you've got bad news. You've heard things that, uh, it's not good. I wasn't expecting that. I've been praying this way, and this happens. Not good news. So how do we deal with it? Number one, we need to have settled in our heart that Jesus Christ is still the healer today as much as he was 2,000 years ago. And even before that, Israel had a covenant of healing way back to Exodus 15, 26, where he tells them, if you do these things, I will not put these diseases upon you which were brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. Your days will be fulfilled. And so we see healing with the Lord all through Scripture. And then we see the ministry of, here. This is so key, the ministry of Jesus. You can base, if, God, what is your will? Look to Jesus' ministry on this earth. Did Jesus ever do anything different from what the Father's will was? No, it's not a trick question. <laughs> the, Jesus always did the Father's will. Okay, always did the Father's will. So whatever we see Jesus doing is the Father's will. And that has not changed. And do we see people healed, physically healed in the ministry of Jesus? Yes. <clears throat> There's not one time, not one, not one, where someone came to Jesus and desired healing for their body and he said, wait. Or he said, not now. Or he said, no, it's not my will for you. Maybe for someone else, but not you. Not one time does he do that. Not once. Not once. So what do we see? Jesus fulfilling the will of the Father. I, I sometimes think, now, if I was sick, and, you know, turn to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. If it's okay, I might just take a few more minutes than what I was originally planning on with this. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8. This right here is, this is one of my, I keep saying it, my favorite chapters. It is. When it comes to healing, there is so much here in Matthew chapter 8. If you have questions, dig into Matthew chapter 8. Meditate on Matthew chapter 8. It is powerful. Notice what happens. There's a few healings that take place. Peter's mother-in-law is healed. She's sick with a fever. Jesus rebukes it, takes her by the hand. She gets up, ministers to them. Notice verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to... Well, that's, that's his uh, mother. Look at verse number 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed... What's the next word? All that were sick. All the, Luke 4.40 says, when the evening came, all they that had any sick with various diseases. So he just didn't stick with one disease to heal any, any, any issue, any problem. They brought him unto him. And so I, I think, now if I, if you and I, let's say you're sick in your body, and you were there that day. Okay, you were there in, in Matthew chapter 8. You're there. Either you came by yourself or someone brought you to Jesus. You're sick, you're in the crowd. 
What happened to you? You got healed. It, it didn't say all he laid hands on them, spoke the word to them, have re-ministered, he ministered to them, and all of them got healed except, except Bob. It doesn't say that. Or half of them did, or three quarters, or 99.99% said all. Many times in Scripture, in the Gospels, it says he healed all of them. And here's the thing. He didn't stop and ask them. That it's not listed in here. If it was real important, it would be in here. But he didn't stop and talk with them and say, okay, <clears throat> now, um, where's your faith level? Um, is, is there, has there been sin in your life? You know, is there, is there, now, he, with the woman who came to him in adultery, he said, go and sin no more. But with, with the majority of these with healing, you don't, you don't see, he doesn't stop. There's some interaction at times with them, but many times it's that he healed them all. He didn't come and say, well, do you have enough, do you have enough faith for this? Have you been saved? You know, well, they weren't saved, actually, because Jesus hadn't died and resurrected from the dead yet. This is all, this is all under, think about this. Here's, here's another amazing thing. All the Gospels, what Jesus is doing, he is all under the Old Covenant. And guess what? You have a better covenant established upon better promises. Say, so, well, if all of these things are true, then why is it many times that it seems like instead of being a healing house, it is a hospice cottage? Why is it that when we minister to people, it almost turns into more of, well, easing their discomfort and helping them through the process and instead of people being raised up. Why, why is that? Well, we don't have time to get into all that today, but here, here's one of the things I, I believe is, is kind of at the root of it. I don't, if you're a born-again believer, and, and I believe healing's for non-believers too, it's for everybody. Because the, that's one of the things that opens up an amazing door is when someone's sick and you pray for them and they're healed, they're like, wow, the same Jesus, well, he can set me free. So it's not just for believers, but as a believer, in a sense, you have a leg up. You, you already have the faith that's needed. And so as a Christian, here's the thing, you have the faith that you need to receive all the promises of God. What we've done is, some, some people think, well, I just don't have enough faith to do this. Jesus ministered to people with little faith, weak faith. Sometimes he wanted to know where they were at, but it didn't, he didn't say, well, then I don't minister to you or help you. So, how do I know that you have the faith? Because, in Ephesians 2, it says, by grace you're saved through what? Faith. And that, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. So what's not of yourself and a gift of God? Is it grace? Is it faith? It's both. Is it salvation? It's that too. Everything is from him. And he did not give you a an imperfect faith. Okay, every time you hear the word of God, perfect faith is coming to you. What we've been looking at is being good soil to receive that word properly and see it begin to grow and develop and mature in us. So you've got the faith that you need. The problem is at times, we take it out of faith and put it into works. I think I've got to do, man, I didn't have my devotions this morning, or I didn't speak healing scriptures 38 times today, and, and so now I've got to start all over again. And what happens, it, it enters a works mentality. If I don't do this, or do that, or do that, and it's like prying God's hands open to try to get him to, to heal me, and like, if I mess up, he opens his hands, and if I mess up, oh, I'm taking that back. You have to start all over again. Is that kind of dad? Do you serve? No. He's doing everything in his power. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. And I'll help you here. Okay, you're right here. Let's, he's doing everything that he can to make sure that what's made available to us is manifest in our lives and brought to pass. But, but too many times, we take it and make it into works. We're moving it out of grace. All I have to do is receive it. Just receive. How are you born again? I received it. I didn't work for it. I didn't earn it. I couldn't pay for it. And too many times we think, now I got in by grace, but I stay in by works. 
You know, if I didn't do things just right, God's mad at me or upset with me. And, you know, he's not going to answer this prayer and that prayer. It's not like he, he's wanting to not answer prayer. And every little thing that you do wrong, he's trying to withhold it. That's not the type of dad we serve. He's already provided, made available to it, all those things available to us. They're yes and amen, not maybe or possibly yes, peer, amen. It's just the way that it is. So we have, we've, I think we've made it too, we've done the same thing with the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. We're so focused on speaking in tongues. We're so focused on I need to clean myself up. No, you can't clean yourself up on your own. That's one of the great benefits and blessings you're filled with the Spirit to help clean you up. So it's grace, it's a gift. We've made it so tough. We made it so works oriented. We just say this, say that, oh yeah, that's it. No, just receive it. Just receive it and begin to thank God for it. Rest in those promises. Rest. We need to learn. They, they which have believed have entered into rest. Now, there is a part that says you need to labor to enter into that rest. Here's the responsibility I believe that we do have. We've talked about faith comes by hearing the word. Well, if I've never heard the word along those lines, how can I believe for it? But once you've heard the word, now the key is to keep it into grace, not move it into works. That's where the battle comes in. Not try to work for it or earn it, but rest in those promises. And what really helps, what really, really, really helps is meditating on those scriptures. I, I believe this is one of the areas where, now there are many times where, especially with unbelievers, you pray for them and they're, they're, they're healed. It's like it's a sign. To him, you know, of God's goodness. And sometimes that does happen with believers, but many times it's a process. They'll lay hands on the sick, Mark 16 tells us, and they shall recover. It's a progressive verb. Okay? It begins instantly and immediately. Remember planting the seed? You plant that seed, it goes into the ground, when the right conditions are met, it begins to grow and develop. And then, as we said last week, there's so much that takes place under the ground that you don't see. And this is many times where we give up and quit or dig the seed back up. We abort the promise. We put it back into works instead of keeping it in grace. And there's so much that's taking place. Just about ready to shoot through, and we just give up on it, quit. Now, the Lord will let you do that if you want. I'd much rather go home fighting for what I believe and standing in God's word than giving up. That's just, that's me. And we all need to make that decision. And so what happens, the word of God goes to work. I believe, here's the thing, it is impossible, it is literally impossible for God's word not to go to work when you pray in faith. It, it, he, he can't not go to work. I know it's a double negative, it's not proper English, but he has to go to work. I'm not forcing him to go to work. He wants to. It's, it's like an automatic thing. You put in that key and unlock it, whew, things just begin to happen under the ground most of the time. In your heart, in the soil of your heart, those things are taking place and germinating and it's working. The key is now just to begin to continue to water that. How's, what's the best way to water that seed in there is meditating upon the scriptures. And it brings a refreshing and it keeps things alive and vibrant. Because what you set your mind on, remember I said in the beginning, is key. If I dwell on the fear and I see myself as a, not a good end result, that's going to affect my emotions and everything else and how I respond to situations. That's why I have to, he said, bringing those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. I have to keep my mind focused. And again, here's, here's the thing. It's not works. It's not, well, I didn't meditate for two hours today or I didn't meditate for the 20 minutes. That's not the issue, okay? It's just think of it as every time you do it, it's keeping those things watered. It keeps the, the sunlight of the word of God growing and in, in what happens is it will be brought to fruition. Don't become weary in well-doing. For in due season you will what? Reap if you faint not. What does that mean? You just keep doing those things you're supposed to and the word continues to work. Automat you can't make it work. It just does. When the conditions are met and you keep watering it, I'm doing my part, but I can't force the seed. It, it's, it's in there. It will produce. It will produce. God does not have bad seed. Okay? And you were born again from incorruptible seed 
Remember, your spirit was born again of incorruptible seed of the word of God. You believe in your heart. You, your spirit is the one who believes. And so you believe, you, this is what you do. You believe. The, the problem is our mind gets in the way. And that's again why it's so important to keep the word in front of us. To keep the word focused upon. Again, not working to try to make it happen, but keeping ourselves in a position, in a place where that word just continues to be watered and come forth. And every, here's what's awesome. Every single one of us, if you're, especially as a believer, you're able to take the promises of God and see them brought to pass in your life. You can have someone pray with you if you want. You can do it. I'm just going to pray and I'm going to believe. You know, you can't, you're trying to call somebody and you can't get a hold of anybody. That ever happened? <laughs> they're not answering. They're not picking up. They see my name. That's why they're not answering. I know it is. I can't get a hold of anybody. Oh, man, what am I? I can't, I can't believe it. Now I can't get healed because I can't get a hold of Doug to have him pray with me and agree with me. I, no. Just, you, it's just you and the Lord. Just go ahead. Pray right there and receive it. It doesn't have to be a long, sometimes we think, the, the harder I pray and the louder I get, the more the devil hears me and I... No, it doesn't have to do with volume. You can do that if you want. It doesn't make your prayers more effective and powerful. You know, you could be real quiet if you want. It doesn't make them less powerful and less effective. It's faith in that word. And so here, just, just to recap briefly, if you're a believer, you've got the faith that you need. You have it. Keep it in the faith realm. You, we could say, instead of by grace are you saved through faith, by grace are you healed. Saved. It's all included in the word saved. Sozo. Okay, healing's in there, restoration. There's all, it's all included in that. By grace are you healed through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest you could brag about it. Look what I did, and my faith got it done, and I got great faith because I see healing brought to pass in my body. Look at me. Uh-uh. It's all about Jesus. He's the one that paid the price. All those beatings and stripes upon him, upon his body. It says, by those stripes we are healed. We're healed. And that's referring, we know it's physical healing because in that Matthew 8, notice what it says here back again. We didn't finish this. When the evening was come, Matthew 8, 16, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. Why? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So back in Isaiah 53, he's talking about, really, you see complete redemption, spirit, soul, and body in there. But when it talks about that he took these upon himself, infirmities, it's speaking of physical sicknesses, not spiritual, physical. He took it upon himself. So I want us, I, I believe, I shared a little bit in the board meeting, I, I believe that um, some of the things we just need to get back to some of the basics and there, there's so much going on in our society and around us. We just need to stay focused on what God has. And I believe that God is looking for believers who are stepping out, willing to pray and minister to others. And as a church, we are, we are not a, a hospice cottage. I thank God for a hospice. It's amazing of what they do. But I believe that as a church, God doesn't want us to be a hospice college, cottage to just help ease people to their last days but to see people healed and restored and the miraculous take place. That when people get bad news and they know there's nothing the doctor can do to help them, they know where to call and who to call. Amen. And we know how to get a hold of God. They, they may not have any understanding of it, but you know how to pray. And we're going to see much more of the miraculous happen and take place here, but also out in the marketplace where God wants it to happen. One last verse I want to back up to, and this will settle it. We've looked at this before. This will settle it, and then we're going to pray. In Matthew chapter 8, 
because people question the Lord's willingness to heal them. I know that God heals, and I see that. He's healed others. I mean, truly, you could share testimonies of people healed from cancer, but then there's also stories of people who died from that. So what are you going to go with? And people question, and that's why, I see, faith's never based on experience or your testimony. Even if you have a miraculous, awesome testimony of God's supernatural healing power that overrid all medical science, and you know what? My faith's not based on your testimony. Because someone else has another testimony, another story of just the opposite. Well, see here, that's proof that God doesn't heal because they believe God and they stood on healing scriptures and they died. Okay, well, they're in heaven, praise God. So they got there a few minutes early. All right? If a days is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day, they got there a little early. And I, share, I won't get into it, I share the story of my mom. I believe my mom went home way too early at 60 years of age. My personal opinion, the Lord can correct me when I get to heaven, she checked out too early. I believe she should still be alive today. My opinion, and I got reasons for it but scripturally. Okay, I'm not ticked off at her, but she went home early. All right, so when I get to heaven, she'll turn around and say, Scott, what are you doing here so soon? I'm like, what do you mean? It's been 40 years. It's like, what? I thought it was just 10 minutes. Well, in heaven's time, it's been probably less than 10 minutes. So, so you, that's what I mean. For a believer, you're just a winner. Either way, you're a winner. But I want to see you stay here as long as God has things for you to do. And when you're ready to go home, just fall asleep in Jesus. That's the best way to go. Okay? And make sure it's in your sleep at home. Don't fall asleep here and die. Okay? I'd prefer it that way. If you do... We'll just celebrate. Thank God they're with the Lord right now. And uh, <laughs> we'll go on with the message. But if, if you're sick, get healed. You still want to go home to heaven? Go home to heaven then. Okay? I believe, not just my opinion, I believe from the word, through the ministry of Jesus, of what he did in healing that all that came to him. And here in Matthew chapter 8, he settles it once and for all. Not only is the Lord able to heal you, he's willing, he wants to. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, her knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now, he didn't question the Lord's ability. He knew all about it. A lot of people, he questioned the Lord's willingness. Lord, if, if, you, if you, I know you can. If you're willing, if you, if you really want to, you can make me clean. Notice what Jesus responds, how he, what he says to him. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now here, this is one of the reasons too, I believe when, when you speak the word, when you pray, immediately it goes to work. You may not physically see the change right away. You may not sense it even in your body. You might. See, again, we don't go upon the, the experience externally because both ways the word is still working. Whether you feel anything or not, whether you see anything or not, it's still working. It's going to work in that unseen realm, you, you don't see it yet. It will show up, okay? So when Jesus says, I will, and notice what happened. He's healed immediately. Then he tells him to go to the priest, show yourself, uh, offer the gift that Moses commanded for testimony unto them. God's healing should be proven out medically too. I'll go back to the doctor. Not only do I feel, but I go back to the doctor and, and it shows. Man, you're, you're healed. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's a testimony unto them. So what do you do? You have an opportunity to share with those people. Okay? Now, thank God for medical science in the sense that, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with medicines. It should be intended for a believer to help keep them going and keep them here uh, until they have a recognition and understanding, oh yeah, I see that Jesus is the healer and stand in faith. So they can help keep you going. But a lot of the time, the medication is not the cure Okay, it's not what's making you whole, but it's keeping you here and keeping you healthy to the point of continuing to be able to stand and believe God's word.
So Jesus, if he tells the leper, it's my will to heal you, and he says to Albert, it's not my will to heal you, he has now become a respecter of persons. And in more than one passage, it says that you become a respecter of persons, you've transgressed. You've stepped into sin. Jesus is not, if he, now don't stone me, okay, but if Jesus is saying, I will to the leper and not I will to you, he's a sinner. He's broken his own law. He proved it here, and he's not, we're not forcing his hand because when he says, I will, it means I want to, it's my pleasure, it would be my delight to heal you. I want to, thanks for coming. I want to do it. And he's saying the same thing to Doug today. And he's saying the same thing to you. Well, I've just put up with this so long, I get used to it. Quit putting up with it. Get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay, we, we just, we learn to live with things. And we need to draw that line and say, nope. No matter, you know, I believe. I believe and come hell or high water, I'm not giving up. I'm standing in God's word.